Okay, let's talk about the paradox of REM sleep. Now you may know REM sleep is the phase of sleep in which dreams occur and that it is crucial to well-being. So therefore, substances that reduce REM sleep, such as cannabis and alcohol, are bad for sleep. But the reality is so much more complex than that because antidepressants also reduce REM sleep and this effect is correlated with their efficacy. In fact, one class of antidepressants known as MAOIs completely abolish REM sleep in human beings with no negative effects on memory. Selective REM sleep deprivation is also an antidepressant and likewise does not affect memory. REM sleep comes in the second half of the night and relative to deep sleep, it's of pretty low priority to the brain. Pressure for deep sleep is about 10 times stronger than pressure for REM sleep. Trying to understand the role of REM sleep in the brain becomes even more confusing when you consider its odd characteristics. For example, REM sleep completely suspends thermal regulation and while neuronal firing during REM sleep is similar to that of wakefulness, levels of dopamine, adrenaline and serotonin are extremely low during REM sleep, whereas the neurotransmitter acetylcholine dominates. The lack of adrenaline during REM sleep is part of the reason it's not so easy to remember dreams. Since adrenaline and noradrenaline are very involved in memory formation, REM sleep is enhanced by the administration of acetylcholinesterase inhibitors, which allows acetylcholine to act on its receptors for longer. And as I said earlier, REM sleep is suppressed by all antidepressants, even atypical antidepressants such as psilocybin or ketamine. Otherwise, GABAergic depressants like alcohol or cannabinoids like those found in cannabis also reduce REM sleep. Okay, so what are the purposes of REM sleep, if any? Well, we don't know exactly, but there are some very interesting theories, such as the idea that the rapid eye movement in REM sleep is intended to stir around the liquid in the cornea, or that the shutting down of serotonin, adrenaline, and dopamine systems gives neurons time to resensitize their receptors, or that REM sleep is the brain unlearning material from the day by sifting through memories and removing unwanted connections, possibly in the form of dreams. Now, I don't want anyone leaving this video thinking that REM sleep is an undesirable state, or that the increased REM sleep in depressed patients is a causative factor in depression. All we really have are a ton of correlations and a lot of questions we can't answer with them. But I hope I have shown you how paradoxical REM sleep is. And if you're interested in learning more, I have a longer video about this on my YouTube channel. But otherwise, stay safe and do your research. Bye.